All right, old friend of the show, Tina Dupuy, is here. She is the new managing editor of CrooksAndLiars.com. How's the new job? It's good. That's my dog in the background. <laughs> so this is your home office, so to speak. Yes. Well, I'm 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 a blogger. Um, I have the dog. I am wearing pajama bottoms right now, and uh, you know, coffee. I mean, the whole stereotype. All right. Well, let's get into your latest article. Um, we've been talking so much about the Occupy Wall Street movement, and I hate to, to pat myself on the back, but I was correct that the way it would cross over to mainstream corporate media coverage was going to be when the arrest started and when it was going to be arguable that the protesters were behaving badly. And you've been pointing out, in, in particularly in your article, how this uh, Tea Party coverage over the over the last year and a half has been the exact opposite of what we've seen with Occupy Wall Street and that it would be unimaginable for the Tea Party to have been treated on TV the way Occupy Wall Street has been treated. Elaborate on that a little bit. Well, could you imagine them being maced um, out there in their tri-corner hats and their glocks talking about uh, the blood of tyrants watering uh, trees of liberty? Uh, absolutely not. But the thing with the Tea Party was that they were invented created essentially on cable television. So when uh, Rick Santelli uh, did his you know, infamous rant about not wanting to pay for lose losers' mortgages, that moment that kind of incited other people to agree with him and go and, you know, and shake their fist uh, in frustration at the big government, um, that, was, that started on the uh, that started on uh, cable news and then it kind of got adopted by Fox and this was their baby that they've been able to go and uh, show off and promote and they're just good patriotic citizens out there who just so happen to be suspiciously corporate friendly and uh, you know and that kind of contrast with how that those same news organizations and John Stewart last night pointed this out beautifully those same exact news organizations that been, have been loving and promoting and and uh, and uh, deifying the the Tea Party are out there calling uh, they called the the teachers unions in Wisconsin uh, they called them thugs and now they're trying to make uh, Occupy Wall Street into a bunch of uh, loser hippies who don't want to work. Well, it's incredible because it's it's multi layered absurdity, right? I mean, on the one hand. We're also skipping over the fact that the Tea Party itself, like you alluded to, was it was astroturf. It was not a grassroots movement by any means, yet the mainstream media still made it appear to be one, incorrectly so in many cases. But the, the further question is, what's the motivation here? My take on it is pretty simple, and maybe it's actually not detailed enough. I'd be curious what you think. It's very clear that mainstream corporate media shares a lot of the same interests that the Wall Street companies being protested against have and it's just that yeah. simple why would they cover it in in a positive way is there more to it no i think when you when you shake your when you shake your fist at power uh they resent it uh when you are the audience to power and uh endorsing more tax cuts for the wealthy and more uh and more power to corporations of course those people in power are going to like you which is what happened with the tea party so this is kind of uh this it makes more sense with the natural movements that have sprung up in this country. The labor movement, of course, their battle cry was a hundred years ago with the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory, uh, when labor kind of stood up and said that these conditions were deplorable. There were a lot of different incidences. Uh, they were not met kindly by the police. Uh, there were there were a lot of these, uh, you know, uh, skirmishes. I want to say skirmishes just to be a jerk, but. Uh, you know, they, they, these happened all throughout our, our history with these. Uh, if you look at the civil rights protest movement, that wasn't, you know, they, they, they uh, had were subjected to uh, fire hoses. I mean, they were not embraced by uh, the powers that be like the Tea Party is. Sure. Uh, and and the, the other thing is moving beyond the way that it that the Tea Party was covered. For, for a while now, and this is just another indicator of how the Tea Party has become the Republican Party, we hear as a, as a common narrative the Tea Party's position, the Tea Party's take. Is it even fathomable that we're going to hear the Occupy Wall Street position on this issue is such? I can't imagine. No, no, not at all. Not at all. This is, uh, 
there and that's what I said in my piece. I mean, there's so many times when you when uh, even on the Sunday shows they go, well, what does the Tea Party think about this? And who are the Tea Party? They're Republicans. They're re, uh, astroturf rebranding of the re, of Republicans who uh, have gone to the extreme. Um, everything that Obama has introduced has essentially been Republican positions. The Heritage Foundation uh, came up in 1989. Came up with the idea of the uh, health care mandate that now is vilified as socialism for some strange reason, even though it's uh, it's all private industry. Uh, what we haven't had since Obama's been elected is a real voice from the left. Uh, I In my article, I describe them as the children of the lost decade. Uh, kids who are 22 years old have $100,000 in student loans and no job prospects because the middle class has been uh, er basically eroding for the last 12 years. Uh, tax and everything's been going to the wealthy. The, la the, the wealthy apparently now are not having a recession anymore. For the last two years, they've been fine. They had a recession for, you know, a couple of months. And they were uh, still doing OK, you know, trickled down on the rest of us. Yeah. And, you know, uh, my my last thing on this I want to ask you about is I'm not particularly optimistic, uh, although I support the Occupy Wall Street protests and I agree with the motivations. I'm not particularly optimistic that they're going to be able to affect change through this method. Are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic? I mean, what's realistic to expect? Will this just kind of peter out? I don't know. I've been down at Occupy LA, um, you know, almost every day that they've been there. We've uh, Crooks and Liars is raising money to give them pizzas and, and across the nation. Um, I see I see more people out there than I would have guessed. Huh. Um, I think that it has real legs. I think people are are legitimately frustrated that the system has been fixed. Um, the system is rigged against them and that people who work for a living can no longer make a living. And I think that it is I think it's growing, not going away. Um, I really see this as uh, something that's, you know, if they're if the, these kids down there in in, uh, in Wall Street are going to stay through the winter, you know, who am I to say uh, what's going to dissipate? Well, we're going to um, keep on it. Now. It's uh, it's it, you're absolutely right that it th doesn't seem to be petering out now in any case. And we'll keep an eye on it. I know your dog's getting very antsy in the background. So I'm going to let you get back to, uh, to him or her. She's a little nuts. To her. <laughs> Tina Dupuis, new managing editor of CrooksAndLiars.com. What will her job title be next time she's on the show? <laughs> it's anyone's guess at this point. Thanks so much, Tina. We'll talk to you soon.